Guys, welcome to Relax Running. Tyson Popplestone here. I'm the founder of Relax Running, creator of the Relax Running AFL membership. If you want to find out more about that and how to get the most out of your preseason run schedule, whether you're a player or coach, hit the link to the membership in the description to this video. I've also added 20% off the annual plan. But for now, I want to share with you five of the most commonly overlooked features or elements of preseason training, which are going to make a radical impact on yours and your team's overall performance when it comes to round one and beyond. Let's have a look. Now, when it comes to planning a preseason running schedule, often we'll see a real intensity early on and we just try and maintain that intensity for as long as we can. The idea of just throwing intensity at players regardless of the position though is an absolutely crazy thing to consider. The truth is uh, midfielders, back pockets are going to play different roles when it comes to their running, so they should train accordingly. So with that said, the first thing we want to do when we're scheduling preseason running training plan is knowing your player position. What is it that's going to be required of you on game day? You're running 15K a day or you're running 10K, you're running 5K. What does that running look like? Is it a lot of speed endurance where you're required to go constantly? Or are you more sporadic speed player where you're not going to be on as much, but when you're required to be on, you go hard. The reason we start there is because we can work backwards. If you're a player required to build speed endurance, then naturally the aerobic foundation of your training is going to be important. And the way we build up throughout the preseason is going to be focused on gradually increasing speed while decreasing recovery to replicate that game day fitness. The same is true for a back pocket, but the way that we do that is going to be very different. It might be a little more focused on speed and intensity with a longer recovery with the idea of hitting quality in those sprints. Don't fall victim to this idea that one size fits all in AFL. Though it's a team sport, there's a lot of individuals who make up that sport and you should train accordingly. The second thing that you're gonna to wanna to do over the course of six or seven months of preseason is progress your training naturally. You don't wanna start September the way you're finishing March. The reason for that is too many athletes go out in October and they start hitting it at 100% thinking this is gonna be the year, but naturally that which gets hot easily tends to get cold easily. And these athletes struggle with, if not just motivation, slumps, injury, performance, plateaus, niggles. It's just a silly way to approach training. Instead, you should go out there with the idea that you know we've got a long time to build up, build the base, gradually work from there. One of the main foundations of the Relax Running membership is our chart program, a progressive overload style of training where as we get closer to round one, our player-specific training sessions start to replicate what that match state fitness looks like. The speed that we're required to run starts to match up. The recovery that we're allowed to take starts to match up. As we get fitter, training gets more challenging, which constantly progresses us through to another level of fitness. Don't be the fittest that you're gonna be in October, November, or December. Build up to your max level of fitness as you get into round one and progress that throughout the course of the season. The third thing which too many clubs ignore is this idea of scheduling recovery. We love the idea of going out and doing the hard work. Sometimes the hard work is not physical. It's taking that rest that your body needs that your mind sometimes doesn't allow you to see. Be as disciplined with your recovery as what you are with your intensity. The two complement each other rather than rocking up at your real high quality speed sessions a little fatigued because your recovery run was too hard. Use that recovery run as an opportunity to actually recover, rock up to the high quality speed session, ready to go, and as a result, get more out of yourself throughout the course of that session. The fourth thing that you need to take into consideration is consistency. As I mentioned, pre-season is a six or seven month project. Don't come out firing for a month and then ignore it for a couple of months and think, oh, I gave it my best shot. It's better to do a little bit less through the course of a week and do that all throughout the preseason than what it is to go out and just smack it out of the park for the first week or two and then just sporadically have that pattern throughout the course of the year. It's a classic tortoise and the hare example. Athletes who take that sporadic approach might look really impressive for a short period of time, but often it's those athletes who can rock up week in, week out, all throughout the preseason, who we see not only stronger levels of running ability, durability, throughout the course of their game, but with a greater ability to be able to actually run faster for longer, which over the course of a game of footy is our main priority when it comes to running fitness. And the fifth thing is don't just get caught running in straight lines. The truth is AFL is a very dynamic sport. Agility is just as important as your ability to run. So when you get out there and actually start implementing running training, don't fall victim to this idea of 
of running in straight lines. Sure, you'll get some incidental change of direction throughout the drills that you're doing with your club and perhaps even in your own style of running, but be specific, be deliberate with incorporating some speed, reaction time, agility into these training sessions. You want to replicate game day as much as you possibly can and change of direction is one of the most important things to complement you in this actual project. Relax running, we've got a whole range of different speed and agility uh, reaction time activities that you can implement in and around your running training to make sure you're getting the best of both worlds. If you're a coach player that's looking for guidance as an individual or as a team, make sure you reach out to us here at Relax Running. As I mentioned, uh, jump on board the membership using the 20% discount code in the description below. Uh, Happy training, guys. We're getting close. It's a long preseason. Be patient, be smart. You'll be amazed at the quality of results you can see in you and your team's running fitness levels over the course of a seven-month period of time if you approach it with a little bit of intelligence. All right, good luck.